I believe many of you watching will be familiar with the story of the Gordian knot. It is a knot not unlike what happens to your microphone cable when you leave it just like that in the bag without properly tying it up first. And if you are familiar with this type of issue, you may know that there might be a little voice in your head telling you, oh, I wish I could just cut this damn thing in two. Well, as you probably know, that is also how the original Tangled Cable problem was solved by Alexander the Great, no less. Reportedly. But what if I told you that there is a different version to this story? A version that does not involve any sort usage at all, and a version that still confers the right to rule Asia to Alexander the Great, but the overall message and lesson to be taken from the story is quite different. Welcome to Executive Psyche. Hello and welcome to the Executive Psyche channel. My name is Peter Novak and I'm a transformational life and mindset coach. And today you may be confused why I'm starting with an ancient myth. But believe me, in a very short while it will be pretty clear where I'm going with this. To anyone who doesn't know the story or doesn't know about the alternative version, uh, this is a very short recap. If you want to skip it, I will be leaving a timestamp down below. But if you are still here, the story centers around the city of Telmesos in Lycia, which is nowadays, I believe, Turkey. So, as usually in antiquity, it is centered around the Mediterranean area. And because of prior events, the city houses a very specific knot that is uh, connected to some oxen harness. And uh, it is prophesied that whoever unties this knot will become the ruler of all of Asia. Well, in the most popular version of the story, Alexander the Great, the Macedonian leader, visits this city on his campaign and tries to untie the knot and finds it to be impossible. So, after several tries, he reasons that it is really not important how the knot will become loose and reasons that he can just cut it with his sword, and so he does. This basically concludes the main part of the story. It confers the prophesied right to rule all of Asia on Alexander and everything is great, right? Well, for me personally, this explanation always seems a little bit off. Alexander is given chance by prophecy to show that he is really destined to conquer a big part of the world. But he chooses to gamble with this opportunity by just choosing to ignore that the knot needs to be loosened and cuts it. This story nowadays is used as an example of out-of-the-box thinking. So obviously the problem seems to be impossible to solve, but if you just change your perspective a little bit and maybe use a strategy that is unorthodox, you can solve it very easily. It is supposed to be an example of assertive creativity. You manage to imagine an unorthodox solution and implement it immediately without regard to the previous set rules. The problem with this approach is that rules sometimes, and most of the time, exist for a reason. Especially when we are dealing with rules of a prophecy, I'm not really sure if you should be guessing how much the rules should be bent. But even in any other situation where we are not dealing with any prophecy at all, I believe this is more of an example of an aggressive type of creativity. And here I believe it becomes apparent that this story is a great framework for some of our executive training. Every complex problem that we will be presented with can be understood as an analogy to the Gordian knot problem. As always, we will have a silent majority in the room, so these will be the people that will be completely happy to agree that it is just impossible to untie the knot and we should not do anything about it. Let's leave these problems to other people, I don't want to be the ruler of Asia anyway. Considering you are watching this video, I believe that we can skip this part because you don't really want to be part of the silent majority. But there will be three action takers that will arise. The first action taker will be the slow moving or the passive creative one. This person will see the problem, completely accept the rules and try to work within the framework very tightly to get the problem solved. So for the analogy of the Gordian knot, Alexander would probably just sit down and start taking some notes, maybe try a different movements of the knot, you should probably also take about 20 of his most intelligent troop and sit them down there with him so that they can help him try to solve the problem completely within the rules. This is of course not a bad solution. All of these three solutions have their place 
and this one will be really useful if time is not really a factor and the rules are everything. It is also ideal when you really have a deep understanding of the problem. Ideally you have already dealt with it before and ideally you have enough manpower to actually create a team for some extended period of time. An example of that would be like a defusal of a World War II bomb. So it has been lying dormant for like 80 years. So you can be pretty sure it's not going to blow up in the next 20 seconds. But you also don't want to disturb it and cut the wrong cable by accident. The opposite extreme of this approach would be what actually happens in the popular version of the story. The aggressive creative approach. You disregard basically all of the rules but the very core ones. Alexander decides that there is just no way the knot is getting looser. But he also reasons that it doesn't really matter how these two parts get separated. So he uses his sword and with one swing he cuts the knot. In this case it really is not only creativity but also true out of the box thinking. It can be extremely helpful in situations that really just require an action as soon as possible. This can be one of the most difficult decisions and it is not really about the level of creativity It is about a baseline level of creativity and a massive amount of decision making. The confidence that you need to have to pull something like this off must be insane. This kind of shot calling will be extremely important for people like military leaders, unit commanders, police officers, firefighters, all kinds of emergency rescuers like paramedics. Imagine you come across a person that cannot breathe because their airways are blocked through swelling due to anaphylactic shock. A wasp has stung them directly into their neck and they can't breathe. At this moment, seconds matter. The brain is not getting enough oxygen. The person is going into a coma and then permanent brain damage will start to accrue. You need to do something. It doesn't matter if it's going to be proper, it doesn't matter if it will require a lot of work afterwards to fix what you have done. You need to act now. You need to cut the knot immediately. But the third kind of creative thinking is the one that I would actually call assertive creativity. In this version of the story, Alexander actually removes the linchpin from the harness and that allows him to manipulate with the free end of the knot. Like this, he is combining the very best by removing the linchpin and actually aggressively loosening the knot before even trying to untie it, but then also creating a free end which allows him to, by the book, loosen the knot by untying it. When you are in that boardroom scenario with actually capable executive people, there will be only very few that go with the silent majority. There will mostly be the first type of creative people who just take the problem as it is and say that anything else is just finding shortcuts and we just have to do it by the book and we should start making a team that will work on it right now. And you will see the people that will be just very aggressive and they will say that okay let's just deal with it now, we can finish it today, let's not waste any more time than we need to, damn the consequences. If you are able to think about a problem creatively and out of the box in a way that does not require a 10-man team to work on it for three months and also does not require you to cross rules that really should not be crossed, you are the ideal executive person. You will find out that these people that sit in the middle are the most rare and that usually means that they are also the most valuable. With this video it is really more of an analogy and inspiration because this is not really an actionable advice but there is one actionable thing about it. When you are confronted with a complex problem that is analogous to the Gordian knot, think about which of these three Alexanders you want to be. Think about what the situation actually calls for. Is it necessary to follow the rules precisely? Is it necessary that the task is done yesterday? If neither of these two are true, keep your sword sheath. Don't start recruiting troops for your new task force. Try to find the linchpin. And I believe that you will find that more problems than you might expect actually have a linchpin. And they can be untied without being cut. I promise that the next video is going to be about something more actionable and a little bit less focused on mythology. But with that being said, if you found value in this kind of inspiration, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. There is a lot more coming. 
This has been Executive Psyche, my name is Peter and I will see you in the next one.